So we were talking last hour, Willie, about um, Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama and Barack Obama, two extraordinary speeches yesterday. And you know, it's a likelihood that two of the best speakers uh, on the political scene come from the same family. One thing to remember, too, is when the Obamas really got into big time presidential politics eight years ago, she did not want to do any of this right. stuff. She did not even want to campaign very much. She certainly didn't want to make big sweeping speeches like this. And she's grown into a role now eight years later where put yesterday together with her convention speech, maybe two of the most memorable speeches of the campaign cycle. She's perhaps become, alongside the president, her most valuable uh, ally to, yeah. to Secretary Clinton. So we just did hear some of the First Lady's speech in New Hampshire yesterday. President Obama also went after Donald Trump hard last night. Much of his focus was also on those down ballot races. At a Democratic state dinner in Columbus, Ohio, the president was campaigning for Hillary Clinton, but also for Senate candidate Ted Strickland, who's currently trailing Senator Rob Portman big by double digits in the polls. I understand that, that Ted's opponents finally withdrawn his support from Donald Trump after looking at the polling, now that it's politically expedient. But he supported him up until last week. So I guess it was okay when Trump was attacking minorities and suggesting that Mexicans were rapists and Muslims were unpatriotic and insulting gold star moms and making fun of disabled Americans. I guess that didn't quite tip it over the edge. <laughs> Why was that okay? We don't even think that most Republican politicians actually really believe that Donald Trump's qualified to be president. <laughs> I, you know, I know because they, I, I talk to them. They're all like, man, this is, this is really bad. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just trying to get through this. So the problem is not that all Republicans think the way this guy does. The problem is, is that they've been riding this tiger for a long time. They've been feeding their base all kinds of crazy for years, <laughs> primarily for political expedience. When finally the guy that they nominated and they endorsed and they supported is caught on tape saying things that no decent person would even think, much less say, much less brag about, much less laugh about, or joke about, much less act on. You can't wait until that finally happens and then say, oh, that's too much, that's enough, and think that somehow you are showing any kind of leadership and deserve to be elected to the United States Senate. You don't get points for that. So Ari Fleischer, obviously President Obama and Michelle Obama going, going hard against Donald Trump yesterday. Um, what is the state of this race right now? What is the state of the Republican Party? Uh, where is this a wipeout uh, for everybody with an R by their name? Uh, does Trump still have a shot at winning? Or is this everybody for themselves? I think the state of the party is it's deeply split. The state of the race at the presidential level is virtually over. The state of the party beyond that, I think Republicans are going to hold the Senate and certainly hold the House because Donald Trump is such an aberration. He is such an independent running for president, not a classic Republican, that I don't see this shaping up as a wave election, even if he loses by five so or six. So let, let, let's talk about, let's talk about your second. So you think this presidential race is just about over? Virtually over. The only thing that can save Donald Trump now, frankly, is some type of external intervention of some sort that changes the agenda. Because what's happened that's killed Donald Donald Trump in this is he happily has made the race about himself. And this was a change election. This race needed to be about Hillary Clinton. It needed to be about policy. But everything now has made it about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump is extremely unpopular. 
That's why he cannot get over this hump against the second most unpopular person in America. Ari, what happens, and I've had some Republicans express concern to me about this, what happens to Republicans who have stood by Donald Trump publicly uh, in terms of their future political yeah. ambitions? Could we have a cascade effect here over the next cycle or two of the next generation of Republican leaders because they tied themselves to somebody who has the potential of going down so dramatically? You know, I've been looking ahead and trying to figure out what will happen happen the day after the election for Republicans. And what happens most depends on what Donald Trump does. If he returns to Fifth Avenue and leaves politics, the Republican Party will largely start to reset after some internal turmoil. If he stays active in politics, the Republican Party will remain deeply split for a while. Who will take over the Republican National Committee will be a Trump supporter. These are the divisions the party's going to have to work out. Now, having said all this, it is a healthy part of democracy. We are a self-correcting democracy. Republicans got their clocks cleaned in 64 with Goldwater, came back in a landslide four years later with Nixon. Democrats lost the House in 2002. I remember David Gregory of NBC News did a stand-up on the North Lawn and said, Democrats are in disarray. I was press secretary, and I thought to myself, no, they're not. They just lost an election. <laughs> this is America. You lose, you win, you come but back. But they won't be guilty by association. No, I, I think that there really is a sense of distancing because Donald Trump is so unique, and, and that's what's going to be the same. Well, this is why and, our Rob Portman can win. And, and Ari, I'm going to say, I'm surprised. Let, let, let's go through some numbers because I 